my name is Gunter Michaels from the Fagabundler Collective. Um, I'm the founder of the project and uh, yeah, I will you uh, show and describe you a little bit what we are doing. We are international um, yeah, collective of photographers, documenters, journalists, and yeah, I show you what we are doing. And um, yeah, I will focus um, mainly then on the hotspots, how, uh, what kind of systematic we developed to organize and archive photos on, on hotspots and as well, how you can have influence on municipalities and trying uh, try to convince them um, to yeah, get more legal spray walls. At first, I will show you some slides, four slides to be exactly with some basic info. And the next part, I will show you directly on the website so you can understand better. So, um, so here, um, just some first basic information. The website fagabundler.com uh, is online since August 27, uh, 17. We have meanwhile uh, around 150,000 photos online on around 8,000 pages. Um, included are 134 maps. There we have four world maps. Um, four means there's one main world map. And for example, we have one world map where you only can see the interviews we did. Or there's another world map where you can see all the people who are um, in the network and involved uh, in the project. There are 83 country maps, 45 city maps, and there are even two spots where that, um, yeah, huge that, yeah, we made maps for this in the collective. There are around 16 crew members, I would say, maybe yeah, plus minus, who are in the core group. And we have 100 plus more contributors who send photos, write articles, uh, and yeah, are in the network. With about the content, we have now more than 170 artist profiles with interviews. Um, there are 300 podcasts directly included or um, on our channels connected with artists and about art things. Um, and besides that, there are like 500 um, reports and 90%, I would say is art related, but uh, you can find as well something about like uh, nature, national park, um, about animals. So there, there is a bit more stuff, but it's, it all has some something to do kind of, yeah, with creativity. What's very important for us, Vagabundl is non-commercial and non-profit. So yeah, we do this because we love it, not because of um, money. So here just a short overview that you can see um, some of the people. So for example, we have Patrice who does the Montreal map or Holger from Germany who does the Berlin map, but um, he as well is doing the map for Rainer uh, and for the Insel Pöhl, the island Pöhl. So there are some people who are doing more maps and um, there are as well maps where are more people involved in. For example, um, we have the map uh, of Heilbronn uh, in Germany. There are eight people who are contributing photos. So, but uh, these are people here who really uh, contributed a lot in the, this almost six years. And there are plus 100 more uh, contributors who, yeah, who are involved. So here, um, yeah, some, um, something about the design and um, how we started to, to archive and the systematic. So you could say uh, I just named it focus level concept because we have different levels and then we make zooms. Like you have the big world map, then you can click on a country and then you zoom on uh, this country, but it's actually another map. So you get on the country map. So um, on the country map, there can be uh, just single cities with an article, which is only one page with photos. But um, we have, like I showed you, uh, city maps where there's a lot of content. So um, you can then from the country map zoom on the level with the city map, um, which are we going to focus on. And then um, the city map, I think till here, 
Um, most people uh, know this. There are a lot of pages like as well, street art cities. Um, yeah, or this this city maps. Um, this is not very new, but we came to the point like uh, there are the hotspots. So what what shall we do? And with places where are like hundreds or thousands uh, of artworks and photos and everyday new ones coming in. So we made a new level, which is, um, I will show you later for the hotspots. And there again, there is another level when from the hotspots, when it divides for pages for artists and events. So the first three levels are all on maps. So you click from one web map to the other map. The next two, uh, the level four and five are on pages. Um, which gives different possibilities. And uh, we will later focus on these hotspots here and the sub pages. And here, the last slide, um, I will um, tell you a little bit then about one example hotspot. And um, because this is a, like a circle, first graffiti and urban art gets created at one spot. Um, others documented, you have the documentation this you can use to go to the municipality or to go to whatever bureaucratic um, institution and tell them, hey, look what uh, is going on here. It's uh, there are people doing things there. There get arts, uh, art gets created. Um, and this is just, uh, yeah, it can be an argument to lead them to um, legalize a spot for open for yeah, for free graffiti uh, and urban arts doing. So um, this is one end example, which um, yeah I want to want to show you uh, later. So we switch now to the website. So this is um, yeah the Fagerbundler website. You can uh, yes we don't see the website. Oh sorry sorry wait I did the fast the uh, wrong. Now you see it? Yep. So this is the Fagabundler website. So um, you can scroll down some explanation. Here are the articles, uh, always the new one. Here's some more info about um, the people who are involved. Here's the world map um, articles. And like here you have the city maps and um, again, like interviews with uh, of all different kind. So we are now, um, I want to show you now two examples of city maps. So I show you now at first Montreal, which is Patrice doing. So here is the Montreal map. So um, there's again, like some text, we have different markers. Um, we, um, like you have bridges or murals, you have golden nuggets, you have um, like bombings fast uh, done. So um, about these dots, which is as well different from uh, many other um, yeah, websites or maps. One marker is actually not um, a marker for an artwork, actually it's the marker for the spot. So this means when I click on this here, you get a page with the artwork. Patrice always writes some explanation about the, the background, about the, about the artwork you have in the infotech always. Um, if it's legal made, uh, if you know it, and if it's all right, you get the contact information, artist, crew, uh, photographer. So that means if on this spot comes a new artwork, you will be just like one line and the artwork gets uh, on top. So we have pages where there are, I don't know, 10, 12, 15 new artworks. So later you can scroll down and have, you have actually a history um, of one spot. Um, so this would be like Montreal. Um, so the other one would be uh, Buenos Aires. Analia is doing Buenos Aires. So here again, we have um, we have the spots. 
right? I so I will open this, and you can also open the maps in full screen. Then you can see better uh, on the left uh, with the categories um, like multi-murals, complex craft, which, which means where if a, a crew or if collaboration bridges and highways. And the interesting thing is that with each uh, person, each map um, started to develop differently. For example, Frank from Hamburg, he is very into uh, bombing and also tags and stuff. So on the Hamburg map, you will find a lot more of this content. Uh, Patrice is more in the murals. And um, so on each map, um, it's uh, it's individually because of the way how the person works. So here we have now the Park Februario in um, the suburb Palermo. So you see again some text um, and now here are some more artists on that place. So you see the photos and artist's name. And if we know, and if some are right, even their Instagram, so we add it. And yeah, so still it is all right. There are not that too many photos. You can scroll down. It's a lot, but still all right. So, but what should we do with a place where you have really like, I don't know, four or 5,000 photos. You cannot scroll down for 15 minutes. And this was a basic point as well. Like on Instagram, you post photos, but you know, after a while, they just vanish on a pile of photos. So I want to show you this on the example of Berlin and some places there. So we go now, um, here you see the other maps, but we go now on the map. And here you have all the countries, um, like you see Canada, this one, but we go now here on Germany and you click on this, then you get the Germany map. So this is one map only for Germany. Here are the different city maps. Uh, there are articles and so on, but we focus on the map and um, we go now here to Berlin. So this part here will be uh, is for the Berlin map. Click now on the Berlin map. Um, we have here now around one thousand nine hundred markers, and like I showed you before, each marker leads to one single page with um, a lot of photos. So the yeah complicated part war, uh, was then with yeah the halls of fame or the as well like with this complex craft where there's a lot of photos so we started to develop a different um systematic i show you here now on the one hall uh, jung van heide you can click on this here you get some explanation oh wait this and then you have for each artist um a own page sub page so um that means uh, for example we go to left the artist is named left i click on his page then you see photos only from him that means if it's a big wall it's focused on the artworks from him or his part, if he does the character, then the character. But then you always see um, the whole the whole wall as well, like here. You see uh, the other artists who are involved. And if I click, for example, now on on Samk or on Esto, I can uh, I go to their sub page, but only at the Jung von Heide place. So and yeah, you can see like there are. Um, a lot of photos only from left, like here, Matilda from Lyon. Um, yeah, so you have on this page now a history of the artist left only from this one spot, Jung van Heide. And that means each um, artist page here is a actually a own history page for each artist only at this spot 
Yeah. So I show you um, another map, uh, another hotspot. And it's um, Mauer Park, which is at the moment the biggest uh, hotspot we have uh, on the whole website because it's just really, really huge. Um, painted that, uh, that gets painted every day. And here we have about yeah more than 600 artists included. So it's really, it's, it's huge. Um, of course, um, there are a lot of uh, artworks we don't know who, uh, who did it. So you have always at the end here at the page with unknown artists. So, um, uh, unknown artists, there's always as well contact information. If people know the artist, they can write us. So, uh, meanwhile, this happened quite often. People write us and say, hey, look, the one blue, white one, this is uh, from this and this artist. The artists write us themselves. Um, they say, oh, yeah, there, um, I did no signature, nothing, but this is from me. So we can sort it to others or make a new, uh, like a new sub page. So Mauer Park. From Mauer Park, I wanted to show you um, Autark. Also a fabulous artist from, uh, artist from Berlin. And yeah, this is uh, his sub page, but only for Mauer Park. So from Autark, we have like, um, I would say around 15 more spots in the city, single spots, and as well, 10 more sub pages like this at other halls of fame. So you can as well scroll down. Um, he's a good friend of us because we also did interviews. So he tells us sometimes, hey, I'm doing an artwork. So Holger from Berlin goes there and they do a photo session. Um, yeah, so there are a lot of artworks from him. And you have here at the end all links uh, which are possible. So we try to uh, support, um, of course, the artist. And if he has any contacts, we yeah we add them so that visitors can easily go uh, um, to the artist pages. And if there's an interview, it's connected here. If there's a podcast, yeah, there's the podcast. So, and um, yeah, now to the one spot I wanted to... Um, I wanted to explain you with this last slide about legalization. So we have here the Northside Gallery, yeah, which is since uh, May this year, also since not even a whole month, since several weeks, weeks, which is now a completely legalized uh, spray place. Of course, since a uh, year, since since big decades, uh, since the place is, uh, was kind of um, abandoned, people did graffiti and painted there and did, did things, but uh, it was not legal. So this means uh, it happened only at night. It happened fast, and um, yeah, so uh, like it, like it is. But um, there is the graffiti lobby um, in Berlin, an organization, and they work on. Uh, making places legal to paint. So they are responsible as well that the Mauer Park, I showed you before, that it became a legal spray space. And here they did a lot of uh, community work, a lot of uh, municipality work. They wrote uh, applications, contract things, and reports. Um, yeah, so two years ago, um, they got an allowance that, um, yeah, that there would be um, a test phase for two years. So you could paint there, but only with the allowance of the graffiti lobby, and they made several events. So you can click here, like the equal jam. Um, we documented everything as good as possible, and um, all the artists included. And uh, yeah, we were. I want to say we were not the only ones who documented. There were um, several others too. But in the end, um, the graffiti lobby, uh, it, it was a kind of additional help. The documentation everybody did, um, they could use it. They even printed all this um, out, like from the Northside Gallery. Every content they printed it, uh, had it on a huge pile of uh, 
paper a report and they after the two years and also in between they could show the municipality look here you can exactly see what happened in these two years you can see uh, how many artworks how different uh, many different types how many styles uh, not like a few hundreds these are uh, thousands yeah so um and uh, of course, there were a lot of more factors, a lot of more stuff was going on and then conversation, discussion, and they had to convince uh, parts of the politicians who who are in this uh, district. But yeah, in the end, it led uh, to the legalization of this spot. And since a few weeks, since May, this place is now legal. Um, you don't have to ask uh, the graffiti lobby. You can go there any time of the day at the night do graffiti, do your painting, paint character, paint uh, letters, what you want. Um, yeah, it's just take your garbage uh, and yeah, don't destroy the place. So yeah, this is uh, something um, which of course the graffiti lobby did, but uh, we are very proud that with our, with our documentation, we could help. And it shows the example um, how uh, artists um, Jam organizers and documenters can work together to create footage to show others um, who are in decision positions um, that it's uh, yeah that's, that places like this are needed and a lot more of them are needed. So um, yeah, so this um, this would be thank you. Good. Yeah. This was the presentation, I think, okay, two minutes of it, but uh, yeah, I hope I could make it compact and uh, describe you everything. So yeah, uh, I'm open now for any questions and yeah, let's discuss about this. Are there any questions? So any questions? Liliana. So, uh, hello, I'm interested in uh, knowing how do you coordinate with all these people, since there's quite a, a lot of people involved. How do you deal with all the all the things? Like, do you have some form of supervision process, or everybody gets instructions how to upload and how to deal with things, and then everything just you know gets together just fine without you intervening. Yeah, let's uh, say I, I started the website first <laughs> and um, like three years ago, I was uh, on a holiday with an old schoolmate, Frank Hoffman, and we talked a lot about uh, preservation and how to archive uh, footage and and things. And um, he was, uh, I did the Frankfurt map by then and he said, hey, look, um, I live in Hamburg now. I could do the same for Hamburg. And um yeah, step by step, uh, new people came. I uh, with Salvador from Chile. I'm connected uh, via Instagram. We wrote, and uh, yeah, he joined. Um, later on, there came Patrice from Montreal. So some people um, uh, write via email. Some with Holger, for example, there are thousands of photos uh, which are all got sent via WhatsApp. So um, there are several different ways um, how the people send things um, but yeah it all developed after after a while so I would say with each person there is uh, like kind of different systematic but in the end it's not that complicated when you have uh, when you did it a few times and you see okay um, you write me a street name the other one you write me the name of the place um, Analia from Buenos Aires, she, she has her own uh, project. She is really, really accurate. And she has, for example, with every photo, um, GPS coordinates. So um, she sends uh, this. So then we can locate the artworks. Um, or, yeah, there are a lot of people who um, are not with the city maps, but they send, for example, 40 photos from uh whatever they have been um they have been, been to montreal and they send 40 photos from montreal so there we don't need like the exact gps or the city name because there is no map for Mon not yet if there would be more and more photos coming from uh, uh, montpellier 
um, then we would maybe start creating a map. So it's uh, it's all in a constant development and growing. And sometimes the one part grows more than the other. So uh, I'm always surprised um, when I look back how yeah how this did happen. Did it uh, answer it a bit the question? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Another question: would, would it also be poss possible to to make it more interactive that the artists themselves can just upload it? Then, because I think it's a lot of work if one person has to take care of what is artist, where like there are thousands of painters every day, probably, um, and then one of one of some person has to audit it and have to look if everything's correct. But it would spare maybe a lot of work and time for you. Yeah, you're completely right. Um, this would be maybe like a next step. Um, I'm sure you all know Sweet Files, uh, like fantastic website. And um, of course, it would be super cool um, if people could upload photos themselves and then maybe like an instrument that you just only have to be in, the, in between and check the photo if it's all right and if it's not some spam or garbage photo and that you only have to approve it and not... Um, uh, to upload all the uploads yourself. This definitely, um, this would be uh, very, very good. This would make it a lot bigger. Um, we have a lot of artists who send photos themselves, but if they just could up upload it by themselves would be would be per perfect. But um, I have to admit, uh, we are not um, on this level yet. And all the people who are involved, there's nobody who is really like, it that much into it that we know would know how to um integrate this but um yeah it's like i said in a constant development and this would be like uh, an aim to have it later even more interactive with uh, visitors and artists hmm? we had another question uh, yes hello uh, i have a question about the map design specifically the markers I would just be interested to hear uh, how did you come up with the markers? How did you um, decide on them? How did you design them? And if the same markers, they are applicable for all the maps. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I have to say uh, I'm not, I, I'm good in WordPress website building, but I'm not that much. Uh, yeah, I don't know how like, completely create our own map and like also with open uh, open map sources. Um, at the time when I started, there was just this easy new map tool from Google. It's called Google My Maps. Um, there you can create your own map, put on markers, whatever you like, different colors, different icons. Uh, and then when you um, print uh, or publish the map, you can use it with Google Maps. That means you can also use on your mobile phone the map. And the idea was as well, if somebody is in another city, you can open Google Map or this map and you can walk around and know where the artworks are. So with this Google My Maps tool, uh, you have the possibility to add 10 categories. Um, of course, I would love to have uh, more, but there are only 10 possible. So um, it can, it's developed step by step. So for Frankfurt, maybe first I had four or five categories, then a new one came. Um, it was clear to have like Hall of Fames. Um, mural would be one category, bridges, um, like train stations, tracks. Um, but then there was the map, for example, from Berlin with Holger. And Holger, he loves to photograph uh, electricity boxes. So uh, we have, I don't know, uh, hundreds, maybe even thousands uh, electricity boxes from Berlin. <laughs> so it became my own uh, category there. So what this what what I meant that um, every map is a bit different. So ten categories. Uh, then you can choose the colors. So after a while, it developed that green, the dark green, uh, are the bridges. So if there's a new map or with somebody else, we kept this like green bridge. Okay. Then train uh, brown. So then murals like um, violet. Or something like this. Um, so with this Google My Maps, um, uh, 
even when you go on one of my maps, there is a little sign on top where you can uh, click create your own map. So there you see uh, you, when you put on a marker, you can choose between, I think, maybe 200 uh, icons, even more. You can put in a dog, a hospital sign, like like the emojis on which you also have on WhatsApp or on your mobile phone. Um, there, there are a lot. And then you can choose a different color. So there is a emoji for a bridge. So easy, we could use this for a bridge. But then uh, for the trains, for example, we said, ah, okay, there are different trains. So if it's uh, on a big train, like train station, we could use the one train icon. If it's in the subway, there's another icon, but it's still in the color brown, but with uh, different icons, for example. And yeah, so it just developed after a while, but uh, this Google My Maps uh, provides a lot um, at first. 